Good morning, online viewers. Thank you for joining us at Revival Ministries for our online service. We are so blessed and anointed that you could join us. If you're joining us for the first time, remember that we have a subscribe button on your screen at the moment. You can subscribe to our channel, have a view at us. Remember, we are on 9 a.m. every Sunday and 10 a.m. for YouTube viewers as well. Well, thank you, but remember also our giving our details on screen. 2 Corinthians 9 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. We know that you're a cheerful giver. Also, remember today is Holy Communion. So get your juice ready, get your bread. We're going to be joining us today. And remember to register for our services. Remember that we register for every service as well. We have a service for 9 a.m. and for 7 a.m. So please, the details are on the screen. Please register. Hope you enjoy an awesome service. It's up to praise and worship. Join us and enjoy. Thank you so much. Amen. It's a time to worship God together. So I don't know who you with right now, but where there's unity, God commands a blessing. So let's worship God together with the person that's sitting next to you, or the people that you're around today. Because when we worship Him, He will command a blessing. Hallelujah. Wherever you are today, just begin to declare, Father, 
that you have risen today, Lord. And it's because you have risen, Father, that we have resurrection. Hallelujah. He has risen. He is alive. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God has risen. He is alive. Reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He's won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. Our God is risen today. He is Greetings in the sweet and powerful, majestic name of Jesus. There's a special time every month on the calendar of Revival Ministries. The first week of every Sunday is communion. Wow, that is so powerful to think just the very thought that we can break bread, come around the table of the Lord and share with the body and blood of Jesus who is not dead but he is alive. Can somebody say amen? So let's get ready together with our families as we break bread, but let's examine ourselves. That's what the Bible says, examine ourselves. We're not here to judge you, but you here to look into your own heart and examine yourself. And if you believe you are right with the Lord, then you are welcome to receive communion this morning. So at a special time like this, we need the blood of Jesus. Amen. We need the protection. We need the covering of the blood of Jesus over our lives. But let me read to you for today. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 onwards. For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat. This is my body that was broken for you. The blood, the body of Jesus. And then in the same manner also, he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new testament, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes I love that when God says in remembrance of me whatever we go through good times bad times never forget to honor God never forget to worship him and to thank him because without him we can do nothing amen and verse 26 says as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes so it talks about hope we have this hope that Jesus is coming back again amen so as you get together as families, let's pray over the communion and then we're going to partake. 
Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the blood that has never lost its power. We thank you for the hymn writer that says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Touch your people right now, Lord. I know that the blood will wash away every sin. And the bread speaks of your body that was broken for us. And your word says in Isaiah 53 verse 5, By your stripes we have been healed. And we thank you right now as we appropriate, we receive our healing, our deliverance, our miracles. Oh God, wherever our people are, in Jesus' name, touch, touch, touch in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Well, let's break bread together with the family of God. Amen. Let's drink from the cup. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We just thank you. We bless your name. Words are not enough tell you how much we love you and how grateful we are oh God one writer said even if we had a thousand tongues it would be inadequate to praise you but Lord we give our life to you as a living sacrifice bless us anoint us heal us deliver us and as we give you praise we love you Jesus amen and amen somebody give him praise in the house hallelujah that God is good all the time. Say he's been good to me. He is no matter what we go through. We're coming through in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. This morning we have somebody as our guest speaker who is no stranger to us, right? He's been here many times and last year we had a great crusade with him and that was such a blessing and it's none other than Evangelist Thurston Mayer all the way from Johannesburg. Open your hearts, open your spirits and you will equally be blessed. Why don't you stand, put your hands together and let's welcome the man of God who is the son of this house. Hey, come on, give God praise one more time. I just want to thank and honor Dr. Allen and Dr. Roshni Joseph and the leadership of Revival Ministries for the opportunity and the invitation to minister to you this morning. It's really a privilege and honor for me to be here. And so this morning I want to minister to you for a few minutes from the context driven by purpose. Hey, come on. Driven by purpose. Are you getting this title this morning? Driven by purpose. And my foundational text is found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8a, the former part of that scripture, and I'm quoting it from the New Living Translation. Let's hear what the Apostle Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8a, the former part of the scripture. The Apostle Paul says this. We serve God. Listen carefully. Whether people honor us or despise us. Whether they slander us or praise us. The Apostle Paul had a deep revelation. And it's only a man that was driven by purpose that could write something like this. We serve God. And today I'm speaking to revival ministries. Whether people honor us. Or despise us. Come on. Where the people slander us. Or praise us. Where the people are for us. Come on. Or against us. Where the people like us. Or dislike us. Come on. Where the people approve of us. Or disapprove of us. Where the people accept us. Or reject us. Come on. Hallelujah. We will serve the Lord all the days of our lives. You see, people that are driven by purpose, uh, come on, are servants of God. Hallelujah. I don't only serve God when things are going 
good in my life. I don't only serve God when people are honoring me. I don't only serve God when people are praising me. I don't only serve God when people are for me. Come on. I don't only serve God when people like me. I don't only serve God when people approve of me. I serve God in spite of because I am driven by the very purpose God has placed in my life and in my heart. Come on, somebody. So whether people are for me or against me, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what the Lord has placed in my heart. And I am driven by the very purpose that God has placed in my heart. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You see, when people clap hands, I'm not moved by it. Because when we move by the clapping of hands, we will be moved by the pulling down of hands. Come on. Oh, am I speaking to someone here this morning? Hallelujah. Let me put it in, 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 in perspective for you. In this life, not everyone will like you. <laughs> I've heard many people say, I don't know what it is about him, but I just don't like him. I don't know what it is about her, but I just don't like her. Come on, somebody. Well, I got good news. You might not like me, but God loves me with an unconditional love. And the God that loves me with an unconditional love has placed a purpose in my heart. And the very thing that God has placed in my heart, that is the thing that drives me. The question this morning is, what is driving you? Is praises driving you? Is the way people greeting you driving you? Come on. Is honor of man driving you? Is the likes of people driving you? Come on, somebody. Come on. Am I speaking to someone? Or are you driven by the purpose of God? You see, and many times when you are driven by purpose, people won't like you being driven by purpose because many are driven by nothing. You see, people in the world will come against you, come on, for the very purpose that is driving you because, you see, you're driven by purpose and people are driven by the things of this world. There's a clash. But we must not get offended. Take things personal. Come on. Come on. We must understand what the Lord has called us to do. We must understand our mission. We must understand our mandate. Come on. We must be driven by purpose no matter what the circumstance may be. Come on. Hallelujah. You see, we are not supposed to be driven by people's likes, people's approval of us, people's praises, people's honor, by people that are for us, by people's recognition, by people's compliments, by people's acknowledgments. Because if all this fails, the question is, what is left? You see, all these things are good and nice, but it doesn't bring true fulfillment. True fulfillment comes when you are living a purposeful life. True fulfillment comes when you are driven by purpose. Are you getting this this morning? And through this time of lockdown, we had to preach online. I couldn't do crusades. No prisons, streets. Oh, for an evangelist, it was a very trying time for me. And when level five just happened, I was locked up and locked down at home, man. And online ministry is not really my thing because I'm a people's person. Come on. I love people. I thrive on the energy of people. I love to connect with people. I love people. So when I hear my preach online, I'm like, Ugh. But listen carefully. I might have not liked the online ministry much. But because I'm driven by my purpose, hey, <laughs> I went beyond what I like, what I'm comfortable with. Because I said, I might not like online. But hallelujah, the gospel is still being preached and people's lives are still being touched and transformed. So my purpose drives me beyond the things that wants to restrict me. 
The question this morning is, what, have been, what has been restricting you and what has been driving you, beloved of the Lord? And today I want to look at two men in the Bible. I want to look at Paul, the Apostle Paul, and I want to look at Jesus. Two men that were driven by purpose. Two men that understood their mission. Two men that understood their mandate. Two men that was not sidetracked or distracted or derailed, come on, by anything that came at them. And let me say this to you. These two men endured much as we read the word of God. But let us look at the Apostle Paul first. Through it all, this man endured. Because he was driven by the very purpose God placed in his heart. Nothing, let me say this to you, could stop the Apostle Paul. Come on, somebody. I want to say to everyone here this morning, there's no devil or demon in hell or person that can stop the purpose of God in your life. You are the only one that can stop the purpose of God in your life. I want to say to people today, it's time, come on, to arise. It's time to get serious about the things of God. It's time to say, hey, enough with the superficial things of this world. I want to be driven by my purpose because I want to make an impact in this life God wants to use each and every one here but you gotta be driven by the very purpose of God and listen to what happened to the apostle Paul it says that Paul was rejected discredited persecuted distressed faced ordeals that produce sorrow such as ill health Faced tribulations in life such as being beaten, stoned. Faced riots in places like Antioch, Ephesus, and Jerusalem because people violently opposed Christianity. They were against Christianity. But this man kept going. They stoned him in one city. And when, he was, when they were done stoning him, he got up, dusted himself off. He said, let's go back into the same city and continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. No stone, no persecution could stop his purpose. He didn't say, oh, they stoned me. Oh, Lord, why must this happen? I've done nothing wrong but preach the gospel to these people. And now they want to kill me. I'm no longer going to preach the gospel. I don't want to be part of these things of the kingdom. I am leaving. I'm aborting my purpose. Come on. I don't want to be a part of ministry no more. I don't want to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is not what the man of God done. Come on. That is not what the servant of God done. The servant of God dusted himself off and said, Hey, let's go back into the city and come Continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see a man that was driven by purpose could make a decision like that. I want to say to you, beloved, this is not the time to draw back. This is not the time to slack. This is not the time to wonder. This is not the time to question God. This is not the time, come on somebody, to feel sorry for yourself. This is the time to press forward, move forward swiftly and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the time to get involved. Come on. This is the time to be driven. Come on. By purpose. It's time to take your foot off the brakes. It's time to go full throttle. Come on. It's time to put your foot flat on the accelerator. It's time to put yourself in top gear. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. There's no time for first year. Little acceleration and a clutch. Little second gear. No, no. Enough with first, second, third. It's time for top gear. It's time for full. Come on, somebody. You got to put your foot flat on the accelerator and be driven by the very purpose God has placed in your life. You see, beloved, I did not come into ministry to test the waters. No. I got into ministry to make waves with the gospel. Hallelujah. So there's no time to test the waters. You see people that get into a church or into ministry or into the kingdom to test the waters will never be effective, come on. Will never be driven by purpose. Will never experience full fulfillment. You got to throw yourself in fully. Hallelujah. Into the work of God. I was saying in the first service, 
The other guys that normally travel with me, they, in, they have their own businesses. And they're so busy, no one could come with me. And then my wife, because she loves me, said, I'll come with you. I said, oh, that will be great. You know, we'll spend some time together. Amen. My wife can look into my big blue eyes. Hallelujah. And then suddenly my wife said, I'm not going with you anymore. I'm too busy. And I thought, oh, I was looking forward to traveling with her. Then I thought, but why are you feeling, oh, you are driven by purpose. Come on. God has placed something in your heart for KZN. So where do you have 10 team members with you? Come on. <laughs> where do you have your wife with you? Come on, that's very good. Or are you alone? You must be driven, Thurston, by the very thing I placed in your heart. So get into your bucket and enjoy the drive to KZN because there's a great work that lies ahead. Hallelujah. So I got into my bucket and I took a drive to KZN all by myself. But guess what? I was not alone. I had the best trip to KZN because I was spending time with my father in heaven. I was talking to him. I was saying, Lord, show me the way. What is your will for KZN in the next two years? You know why? Because I am driven by purpose. So saying 20 crusades in 20 months, shoo, if you think about the budget, it will scare you. I said, no, I'm not thinking about all of those things. God has given me a vision. Hallelujah. I am driven by purpose. And as long as I'm driven by purpose, the Lord will undertake for every crusade in KZN. Because this, come on, is God's vision, God's ministry, and God's harvest. Are you receiving something this morning? So yet yeah, Jesus experienced, Paul experienced all these things. Listen, he said he experienced sleepless nights. Sometimes went hungry because of a lack of finances. Bitten by a snake. Shipwrecked. Imprisoned for preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But Paul triumphed against all odds because he was driven by purpose. But you know how grateful I am. That this man was driven by purpose and not emotions and feelings. Because the Lord used him through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Come on, listen to me carefully. Hallelujah. If he had to abort his purpose, we as ministers and as children of God would never have been reading the 13 epistles that Paul, come on, come on, wrote, hallelujah. We would never as ministers be been preaching from these very apostles. But the man, come on, was driven by purpose. The man understood his vision, his mission, and his mandate. And he continued in spite of. And today, we are encouraged, come on. Today, we are preaching from the very scriptures that the man of God wrote, inspired by the Holy Spirit, because he was driven by purpose. So I'm so grateful for the Apostle Paul who did not abort his calling. I'm so grateful for the Apostle Paul who did not drop out of ministry. I'm so grateful for the Apostle Paul that went full throttle even when he was locked up in a prison. He was flat footed on the accelerator saying, Lord, give me a download. And the Lord gave him a download. And today we have two thirds of the New Testament written by a man, come on, that had a supernatural encounter with Jesus and that was driven by purpose. Do I have any people at Revival Ministries this morning that wants to go full throttle, that wants to put their foot flat on the accelerator? Is there any people at Revival Ministries this morning that says enough is enough? We are no longer going to play church. We are going full steam ahead for the Lord because we at Revival Ministries are driven by purpose. Listen to Jesus. Jesus who is all-powerful, infinitely strong, deeply caring, and a loving helper. Listen to what happened to him. Jesus was dishonored, rejected, discredited, persecuted, undermined, undermined, denied, betrayed. Listen, that word undermined, every time I read it, hey, something jumps in my heart. Because myself, even in ministry, there was many times... I came into places and people would have undermined me as a minister of the gospel. Come on. I was undermined, blatantly undermined by people, by leaders, 
But you know what? I used to just smile and look at him and think you don't know what I know. I'm going to get up on that stage, take the mic, and something is going to happen. <laughs> you can have the outward man uh, all you want, but there's something inside of me hey, that your undermining cannot touch. There's something inside of me. Come on. Come on. Come on. That your likes, dislikes cannot move. And it's my purpose. But I did not allow the undermining of people to derail me. I did not allow that to make me feel, oh, uh, maybe I mustn't minister. No. I went full steam ahead, and I'm still going full steam ahead. And guess what? I'll always go full steam ahead for the glory of God. Jesus, undermined, denied, betrayed, slapped in his face, on his head. Imagine the king of kings being just slapped, rudely slapped, abused, accused by the chief priests and elders, interrogated by Pilate and Herod. Jesus took the place of Barabbas like he took our place. Scorched and whooped. People spat at Jesus. Imagine, people spit at you. But Jesus was not distracted by all of it. He was driven by the purpose that God placed in his heart. They blasphemed Jesus. You saved others. Now save yourself. Imagine that. But it was the very purpose of God, beloved family, that drove Jesus to the cross of Calvary. The very purpose of God that drove our king to the cross. And his purpose was to pay for our sin and purchase a place in heaven. And I'm so grateful that the purpose of God drove Jesus to the cross. Because if Jesus did not go to the cross of Calvary, if Jesus was not obedient to his purpose, if Jesus did not submit under the authority of heaven, where would you and I have been today? Hallelujah. But Jesus endure it all he went to the cross of calvary for you for me and for the world because it was the very purpose of god that drove him to the cross of calvary and we all here today and the world and generations to come will benefit from a man that was driven by purpose there's people in this world beloved family that will benefit from you if you decide today enough is enough I'm going to be driven by the very purpose God has placed in my life. People will benefit from you. Come on. You know, when I was Bible school and decided to go to Bible school, hey, everything went wrong for me. Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. I know there was once I couldn't pay for my Bible school fees. God built my character, man. And I attended Bible school, never missed a class. And it was exams. And I came to write my exams. And as I came, they said, Mr. Mayor, please come to the office at Bible school. And I came, they said, sorry, you can't go and write the exams. Because you owe us money, so you are not allowed to write. Hey, my heart pained when they said that to me. I left that lady, ran down the stairs from Bible school. Tears rolled down out of my eyes, down my face. And when I came to the end of the stairs, I said, no, man. I made a U-turn. I ran back up. I said to the lady, excuse me. I know you just worked here, but I want to say something to you. With or without Bible school, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I left. God supernaturally made a way for me. My Bible school fees got paid. I went, I wrote, and I finished Bible school. But I made a decision in my heart because I knew that I am driven by purpose. I said, with or without Bible school, I am going to preach this gospel and I will make an impact. In the nations, she just looked at me like she saw a ghost. I didn't allow that to discourage me and make me feel like no more Bible school. Huh? Because the, no amount of money paid to Bible school could buy the calling that God called me with. Oh, you're getting this this morning. Jesus paid the price for our sin and purchased a place in heaven for each and every one of us because he was driven by purpose. You see, Jesus came from heaven to earth, from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave back to heaven, seated in heavenly places because he was driven by purpose. Listen to what Exodus chapter 9 verse 16 says in the New King James Version. It says, but indeed for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name 
may be declared in all the earth. The Lord has raised you up. Come on. For this purpose, that he may show his power in you and that his name may be declared through you in all of Chatsworth, come on, in all of KZN, in all of South Africa, and in all of the world. The Lord saved you. The Lord delivered you. The Lord redeemed you. The Lord justified you for a purpose. God did not just save you, come on, to sit at home and watch some television. God did not only save you to become a pew sitter. God saved you for a purpose. The Lord has a great plan and purpose with your life. It's time to arise and be driven by the very purpose God has placed in your heart. Do you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Listen to, what the Bible, listen to what the word of God says. Amen. It says here, beautiful. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21. You can make many plans but the Lord's purpose in the New Living Translation. You can make many plans but the Lord's purpose will prevail. My prayer life has changed. I make plans but then I come to the Lord. I lay at his feet. I said, Lord, this is my plans but I pray that your purpose will prevail. Because your purpose, come on, is more important than my plans. I'm not driven by plans. I'm driven by purpose. This is my plans. I've worked on this. I'm trusting you for this. But I'm placing it at your feet. Let thy will be done. Come on. Here in my plans as it is in heaven. May your purpose prevail. Do you know why I pray that way? Because I am driven by purpose. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 25 says this in the Passion Translation. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 25 in the Passion Translation. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Come on. Looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. You see the enemy attacks people, attacks the church, attacks believers. He's attacked is ultimately just a distraction. He wants to distract you from your purpose. Come on. That's why Satan attacks you. Because he wants to distract you from your purpose. So we mustn't be distracted. We must set our gaze on what lies ahead with fixed purpose. You see, when you're driven by purpose, the enemy can bring whatever against you. You're going to do like a, a, a boxer. They call it body, bob and wave. You know how to bob and wave as a boxer. So when a boxer throws a punch, you bob, you wave. You see? So that's how you operate in the kingdom. When the enemy hits you with an attack and you're driven by purpose, you're just moving forward, bobbing and waving, bobbing and waving, keeping your eyes on Jesus because you are driven by purpose. Come on, somebody. You bobbing and waving, but you continue moving forward. You don't regress. You don't pull back. You don't draw back. Come on, somebody. You don't start feeling sorry for yourself because God has not called you to be pitiful. God has called you to be powerful. So you continue moving forward, bobbing and waving, bobbing and waving, bobbing and waving, because let me say this to you. The enemy is never going to stop throwing punches at you in different areas of your life but you got to get it right you got to be driven by purpose and you got to get some flexibility to move to bob to wave come on to duck come on but keep moving forward don't allow any onslaught of the enemy come on to distract you stay focused on your fixed purpose because the Lord wants to do great and mighty exploits to the congregants at revival ministries I'm preaching to myself here, man. Whoa. Bobbing and waving. Come on. You can bob and wave, auntie. Show me the stand. Just do one, two. Come on. One, two. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Listen, listen. Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe said, the greatest tragedy in life is not a man dying, but a man living life without purpose. <whistles> Imagine. He says, a greater tragedy is a man living life without purpose rather than a man dying a physical death. He says that is more of a tragedy. But I know I came to speak to people this morning that are driven by purpose. I came to speak to a people 
that is serious about the things of God. I came, came to speak to your people this morning that are going to move swiftly forward. Hallelujah. We are declaring and decreeing enough is enough. Come on, come on. The gospel must be preached. We must witness. We must impact our communities for the glory of God. Hey. Listen to what John chapter 12 verse 26 says. Powerful. It says, if you want to be my disciple, Jesus says, in the uh, the Passion Translation, if you want to be my disciple, follow me and you will go where I am going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, listen carefully, here comes the punchline. The Father will shower his favor upon your life. Wow! So when you are driven by purpose, when you are truly a disciple of Jesus, saying that I've made up my mind, the cross before me, the will behind me, no going back. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm a bond servant of Christ. Come on, somebody. And I'm not going to allow any distraction to derail me. Jesus says, when you operate in that dimension, then our Father, come on, our Father in heaven will shower you with favor. It's the very purpose of God that brought me to KZN. I miss my wife. I miss my home. But the purpose of God is what brought me here. Come on. And I'm more excited than what I was when I arrived. Because now we're planning two years ahead. And because I'm driven by purpose, I'm not stressing about the finances or the budget. Because the Bible says, Jesus says, your father in heaven will shower you with favor. Ha! <laughs> Shower you with favor. So guess what? Uh, The budget is there. How about the provision? I know. Come on. God will provide. I love what the late evangelist Reinhard Bonker said. He said, never plan with what's in your pocket. Plan with what's in God's pocket. Come on. So because I always plan with what's in God's pocket, I'm always driven by purpose. People say so much. How are you going to do this? I said, I don't know, but that's exactly why God is going to get the glory. And we're coming to a close. Matthew chapter 20, verse 27 to 28. Are you receiving something this morning? Because the greatest honor, Jesus says in the Passion Translation, Matthew 20, verse 27 to 28. Because the greatest honor and authority... Is reserved for the one with a heart, the heart of a servant. The greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with a heart of a servant. The one that is driven by purpose. The greatest honor and authority is given to servants. <laughs> you see, everyone wants to be the leader. No one wants to be the servant. But true leaders are the most brilliant servants. Come on. Come on. And when I said that, you know the cowboy movies, you know the chief and the cowboys and there, so nothing against anyone. I'm just using something that we used to watch movies with. But everyone will be the chief. No one wants to be the servant. But here it says the greatest honor and authority is given to the servant. So I rather want to be a servant. And receive the greatest honor and authority. Hey, come on. From this place. Because that's what the Lord served, saved me. To be his servant. That's what the Lord saved you. To be his servant. That's what the Lord saved you. To make an impact in other people's lives. Come on. You are wonderful people. People of Chatsworth. The Lord has a great plan and purpose with your lives. But it's time that we rise up as a people. And say enough is enough. We are going to be driven by purpose. Someone out there is waiting for your story. Someone out there is waiting for your testimony. Someone out there is waiting for your witness. Someone out there is waiting for you. A people driven by purpose. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 19 in the Passion Translation, Paul says, Now even though I am free from obligations to others, I joyfully make myself a servant hey, to all in order to win as many converts as possible. Listen to the Apostle Paul. He says, I joyfully make myself a servant. You can say this way. He's, 
He joyfully makes himself a servant because he joyfully wants to receive the greatest honor and authority. That's why he taught with such authority. Come on, preach with such authority because he joyfully made himself a servant. And then he says, to all, not to some people, in order to win as many converts as possible. We have to make, joyfully make ourselves servants in order to win as many converts as possible, meaning in order to get as many people saved as possible in Chatsworth, in Durban, in South Africa, and into this world. Come on, somebody. But you and I have to joyfully make ourselves servants, beloved. You see, someone that is driven by purpose is a joyful servant. Offense is the bait of Satan. And I close. You may ask me, how do you stay on track in ministry, Brother Thurston? I'm glad you asked me. Here's the answer. Catch this. The way I stay on track in ministry, I do this. Never become people driven. Always be purpose driven. Make room for people to be people. Because people are people. And when you are purpose driven and not people driven and you make room for people to be people, there'll be so much less offense in the church. There'll be so much less slander in the church. There'll be so much less gossip in the church. There'll be so much less people taking things personal in the church. Come on. There'll be so much less backsliding in the church when you become purpose driven and not people driven. So myself, I just allow people to be people because I know what the Lord has missioned me, called me, and mandated me to do. Glory be to God. Amen. Give a hand clap to Jesus. Did you receive something? Hallelujah. Listen, I conclude with this. Jesus and Paul were not driven by people's likes, people's approvals, people's praises, people's honor, people's recognition, people's compliments, people's acknowledgements. All these things are all good and nice, but it does not bring true fulfillment. Purposeful living equals a fulfilled life. So Jesus and Paul understood what brought true fulfillment, and that is to be driven by purpose. Paul was driven by purpose to a point of death. He was beheaded in Rome. He died as a martyr for his faith. Imagine that. This man was serious about his purpose. It drove him to a point of death. Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. Died for the sin of all the world. He was driven to a point of death. Come on. Two men that were driven by purpose. The only difference with Jesus is that he was raised on the third day. Come on, somebody. And because of that, hallelujah, we have salvation. I'm not saying you must be martyred for the gospel. I'm not saying you must be crucified for the gospel. I'm not saying you must die. That's what I'm saying today. But I'm saying die to the flesh. Paul said, and I'll end with a scripture. Galatians 2.20. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul understood that to be effective, to be driven by purpose, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives. The only way you'll be effective in the kingdom is for the I to die. The flesh must die. And when the flesh must die, the spirit of the Lord will rise up and raise you up. And the Lord will do great and mighty exploits through each and every one of you. But it's time, beloved, to arise to die to the flesh and to say what Paul says I at revival ministries have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me let the Christ who lives in you let people see the Christ who lives in you be driven by purpose young man, young girl, mom, dad and watch what the Lord is going to do in and through your lives give a hand clap to Jesus did you receive something? Hallelujah. You know, I shared this testimony. I'll share it and then we'll pray for people. You know, one day I was preaching on the streets and they called the police. I shared it before you to arrest me. And they came with the machine guns. 
the police thought they're going to intimidate me. But what I did not know that was they could not intimidate my purpose. <laughs> they asked who's in charge. I said, me. They said, we'll arrest you with your sound system and all. I said, sir, take me. You're doing your work and I'm doing my work. Hallelujah. I am driven by purpose. Nothing is going to stop me. You can cuff my feet, cuff my hands, but you cannot cuff my mouth. If you need to take me to the jail cell, then take me now. But I'm going to continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in that prison holding cell because nothing will stop the purpose of God in my life. I want to say to you, don't allow nothing in this life to stop the very purpose of God in your life. Because without purpose and living a purposeful life, we are empty. And I'm so grateful today that Jesus was obedient, submitted under the authority of heaven. That Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and he died for you and me and for the world. He was driven by purpose. Are you not grateful that Jesus went to the cross? And I'm even more grateful that God raised him after the third day. What a sacrifice for you and me. It's going to take some sacrifice from you, my brothers and sisters, mom, dad, to make an impact in your community. Things are not just going to happen without you. The Lord needs vessels. Driven. Purpose. Driven. Vessels. To make a change and bring change in Chatsworth. Wherever you are in this place. Maybe you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just where you are. Maybe once before you did serve the Lord, but you find yourself way with you far from God. I want to say to you that God is not mad at you, but God is mad about you and still madly in love with you. He loves you with an unconditional love. And maybe you heard the message and said that you want to be driven by purpose. You want to live a purposeful life. But I want to say to you, it starts with Jesus. Coming to purposeful living starts with salvation. And if that is you this morning and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please just slip up your hand wherever you are. We're not going to call you forward just where you are. Slip up your hand. If that is you and God spoke to you this morning and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior or you want to, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, you are far from God. You're out of God's will and you say, Brother Thurston, that's me this morning. I want to say yes to Jesus. If that's you, just slip up your hand, slip up your hand, wherever you are. Just repeat this prayer after me. Praise Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died, that you were buried, and that you rose on the third day. I now receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give him a hand clap. Hallelujah. If you trust in God for healing in your body, just stand to your feet. Healing in your physical body, maybe healing in your mind, healing in your heart, just stand to your feet. Stand wherever you are. You trust in God for healing, stand. I'm going to pray a prayer of healing, a prayer of faith. And I believe that the Lord will touch you right there where you are. Whatever it is, it is you trust in God for. Healing, 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 healing. If you have a family member bound to drugs or alcohol, that you trust in God to deliver them. They may be not here, but you are here and you are faith enough to stand as the centurion stood for his, for his servant. You want to stand in the gap? Stand to your feet. You're standing in the gap for a family member, a friend, a, 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 a husband, a son, a daughter, someone you love dearly, maybe just a, 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 a neighbor. Stand to your feet. You, you want to stand in the gap for those people. God will deliver them like he, he delivered me. And I want everyone that's standing to raise your hands to heaven. I'm going to pray healing, then I'm going to pray for deliverance for family members. And just believe, receive by faith. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing anointing, your healing power, your healing virtue. To touch each and every individual, trusting you for healing, my God. I pray that your healing power will flow from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Touch them, healing in their physical bodies, healing in their minds, healing in their hearts, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you, loose from every infirmity, loose from every disease, loose from any illness, loose from any sickness. Thank you, Father. I pray for a supernatural relief and release 
of any pain, discomfort, and disease they're experiencing in their bodies in the name of Jesus. We also pray for healing in their minds, healing in their hearts. I pray that you'll mend every scar in their hearts in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we pray for deliverance. For those standing in the gap, for family members, loved ones, my God, we pray that your delivering power will touch them. Deliver them from any addiction in the name of Jesus. Like the centurion stood in the gap for his servant that was paralyzed and dreadfully tormented at home. And as he stood in the gap, your power, your very word touched the servant. I pray that your word of healing and deliverance will touch those bound to narcotics, alcohol, pornography, whatever it is, they are bound to my God. I pray that you'll deliver them in the name of Jesus. I pray even for those in the service this morning that is struggling with addiction. Loose them, Father. Deliver them. Set them free indeed in Jesus mighty name and we thank you for testimonies of healing and deliverance in Jesus name Amen and Amen